Oh, wow. What's up with this holy mountain, man? What's up with the holy mountain of harmonics? This is Presta John, installment number 85. We're looking at Morocco. We're looking at Muhammad. We are, you know, staring at the champagne moray. All this is in America, right? Tip of canoe. For a battle between Tecumse and all hijacks to be taking place right in Morocco, my luck. I mean, was it Morocco before the Tecumseh War? Did it become Morocco after the Tecumseh? This is a good question, man, for Preston John 85, I mean. Allow Hawa Drop Nation, you got us here. You know, your consistent energy got us here. So the water to you, all the dragons on the wall, all the contributors, all the ways you are contributing. Can we make sense of this? Love to the bro, minister informing man. At the battle for it all, because you know, this is what I'm gonna call it. They call it the Kumsey's war, like they call it the Kumsey's comet. Then you got Napoleon's comet and it's the same comet. They're seeing the same dragon. We're gonna talk comet and meteors because they're talking meteors. Then we got some big meteor storm about to pop off. Before they were saying meteor showers. Now they're cranking them up to meteor storms. Oh, you're getting caught in the debris of these comets and particles. Or it's just all happening and you just don't know what else to say. I'm staring at a map within the United States of America. <laughs> Cool, we know Morocco uh, has a connection here, right? We know Atlantis and the pharaohs of Egypt have a connection here. We know it's all about harmonics. You know, Thoth even said he put a, a spell vibration on these <laughs> jabronis. Man, he, Thoth came and put a slave vibration on them. I mean, the, the king's chamber is in 440. Look it up. So what harmonics is this holy mountain in? What's it got to do with the cube that they're walking around? And what happened to this, you know, so-called holy mountain of harmonics? And the big question is, how in the world is the Kumse, the Shikamagua, Dragon Canoe, all fighting against these treaty-making Covered as nuggets, covered in the promised land. When did it become Morocco? Now, I know they're going to say it's always been Morocco, brother. <laughs> you sure? Because the Kumse was fighting for something. Somebody kept making treaties and giving up land. I mean, somebody made a treaty that gave up, what, 3 million acres of land? Look up that. What's it, the Fort Wayne, something about the Wayne, Wayne Treaty. You know, we're going to end up digging on all this because the drop just don't stop. It's just so amazing. On this map, you see more ish signs temple. <laughs> and then you see the crescent and all their stuff, right? You see this migration happening, spring, summer. I mean, something's going on really close to Danville, man. And I know there's a lot of Danvilles, a lot of places, but <laughs> you know, there's a whole mystery about Danville in the cartoon uh, series, Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, Phineas, man, free Phineas. We're going to talk Acadia and Akkad. 
But yeah, you know, Phineas and Ferb was taking place in Danville. Everybody's like, where's Danville? It's supposed to be a drive, a short drive from Mount Rushmore. And the ocean is close and different things. They're like, where's Danville? And I see Danville on this map. I'm like, that's the Danville. We saw the Phineas and Ferb mystery. This is the Danville. Because <laughs> this Danville is only 16 miles from Morville. But we just talking Morocco. The formula for the holy mountain figure is supposedly contained in the odd dimensions of the so-called cube built by Abraham and Ishmael. They're talking cube, man, not me. I'm just reading this, digging on this Wabash River and thinking about all the damn dams that they dammed up the place to stop the flow. And this river used to flow right through this so-called holy mountain of harmonics. And what does this holy mountain have to do with the holy mountain of Mount Carmel? Carmel, right? I know it's in the Middle East, I know, but there's also a Mount Carmel, you know, Indiana. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff is happening. I mean, it's all happening. You know, Mount Carmel, the same place that Elijah wrote up on the false prophets of Baal and put them down with dragon fire, 50 jabronis at a time, getting hit with dragon fire. Mount Carmel, he's taking out the prophets of Baal. And we're just talking about idolaters hijacking the Holy Land. Was it Morocco before the Shikamagua? Or is this a process or a, um, was this part of the treaty, you know, that they would get to set up shop? It's uncomfortable. But as a family, we got to have a family conversation. I'm speaking unity. But in order to unify, you got to know who you're unifying with. In order for you to unify with us, there has to be a us. I'm working on the us, my naga. We tribing up. You got to fall back. Let us ask these questions. Let us tribe up in our code because you can't bring us our code, apparently, because you haven't brought us our code. You want us to be more ish. But we are the great. We were great before this Morocco, Muhammad, Mecca situation right here, man. We were great before Atlantis. Don't you see? We represent the original oregano flow, the original harmonics. We in that nine spiral. You did? I mean, you knew, you knew we was coming. Your oracles told you we was coming back. Our prophets told us we was coming back. Was it Morocco before the Tecumse War? Or is this the result of the confusion? Tecumse is trying to trying to tribe up the tribes for a reason to fight against these powers, spiritual and physical. Push Mataha says, nah, we're going to stay friends with these hijacks because we, we eating over here. Oh, y'all starving? We eating. You know, the hijack always chooses a side and they, you know, let them eat and let you starve. And that causes the division. You know, it's always been like that, divide and conquer. But on the other side, they eating it. They tired of the Kumse shining on them. They tired of the tribes of Israel shining on them. Hasharala shining on them. Seeds of Jacob shining on them. They tired of the royals that have all the promised land and, you know, have all the things, have all the stuff. They want to see your downfall. Psalms 83. Man, let's start in Psalms 80. Let's press to 84, man. Let go. O 
a wow. This ain't no play play. For the leader upon Geteth of Asaf. Sing aloud unto Hawa our strength. Shout unto the power of Jacob. I'm not talking about the power of your tribe. Right? I mean, we in India superior, popping off. <laughs> you represent what you represent, right? You represent what you represent. This ain't the power of Jacob. Ain't, you know, respectfully, because as a family, we can have a respectful conversation. Because again, you want us to be us. Trust me, I ain't against you. If you knew, you know, my purpose, our purpose, you know, you would really be rooting for us and helping us because you need us to be us, man. Don't y'all need us to be us? Or do y'all want us to forget we us? And that puts you in the same category as Hijack 101. You don't want to be like the Hijack, right? Want to erase everybody's history, control them, put a slave vibration. You don't want to thought us up around here. You want to love your brother, right? You want your brother to be your brother. When your brother can't be your brother if they don't know what tribe, what tribe they from and definitely what power they serve. You can't fool us and trick us into saying we serve the same power. We ain't rocking with no cubes. We ain't walking around no cubes. We ain't throwing stones to Mercutius. We ain't throwing stones to Saturn and Mars. Our prophets come out of Jacob. This is the migration of Ishmael. And Ishmael had the code because he was rocking with Abraham. But what happened? So we all claim Abraham. We're supposed to be our brother's keeper, but we're going to read about it. You need us to be us. Because once there's a us, there's an opportunity to tribe up with you. But how can we tribe up with you if we ain't no tribe? I'm talking about the power of Jacob. Hashira, Alahua. We're going to take it nice and easy, man. Alawa. I'm going to take it nice and easy. So we are shouting unto the power of Jacob specifically. We're not shouting into the power of any other tribe, which is why, you know, not all of you, but some of these other tribes don't want us to be a tribe because they don't want us to shout into Hawa. Because once Hawa hears us, it's a problem for them because they have to make recompense. The Moorish sciences ain't going to save them against the power of Jacob. These confederacies and treaties ain't going to, it might have helped y'all you know, team up and tribe up against us. It's not going to help you against the creator. The creator didn't give you that assignment <laughs> to violate your brothers, man. You just took the opportunity because you knew that this was the time, if there was ever a time, <laughs> to set up your shop, right? Not forever, but for a time, right? And hey, in the meantime, you can come up. You can get a head start. You can build things you think might be able to hold off your judgment. But the power, Hawa, our power. 
<laughs> Our power takes up the melody and the sound of the timbre, the sweet harp of the sultry. We're just talking harmonics, right? Blow the horn at the new moon, at the full moon for our feast day, for it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance for the power of Jacob. He appointed it in Joseph for a testimony when he went forth against the land of Egypt, the speech of one that I knew not did I hear. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were freed from the basket. Thou did call in trouble and I rescued you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. Whoa. A was. <laughs> Hawass said, I answered you in the secret place of thunder, man. What is it? Can someone tell me what it means? Can, some, can someone tell me where is this secret place of thunder? I proved you at the waters of Meribah. Oh, my people, I will admonish you, O Israel, if thou would hearken unto me. And all you had to do is listen, because all I'm saying is there shall no strange gods be in you. All right, so in order to be a tribe, or at least a tribe of, with the children that have the code within them that put the creator first, M-H-O-E, most high over everything. You need to understand that we can't put no other power before our power. In order to break us down and break us apart, you have to give us a false power. You have to make us an ish. A great ish is not a great. Smart ish is not smart and strong ish is not strong and more ish is not the more amor amorica. One harmonic is not the same as another harmonic. To tribe up with us, you got to put a wah over everything. Now, that might be where we just ain't going to be able to walk side by side. You call on, you know, whatever other power of this and the power of that and the, the God of the wind. And the, <laughs> we call on the creator of all. <gasps> wah. Respectfully, can two walk together lest they agree? No strange God shall be in you, neither shall you worship any foreign God. You didn't know no Jesus or Jesus. You didn't know this, man. This was brought to your shores. This was brought to your tribe. Your, your Yahweh Shai was brought to you. It is a foreign God, this doctrine, that you got to go through this foreign God to get to Hawaii. No strange God. Only Hawaii. I am Hawaii, your power. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Damn. With permission of the Pharaoh, they migrate. To get free out of the land of Egypt, <laughs> you got to be free from their harmonics, man. You got to get out of that 440 hertz, out of that slave vibration. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people 
They didn't want to listen to my voice. Hearken not. And Israel would none of me, man. They didn't want nothing to do with me. Dang. <laughs> I mean, the only way you can get these harmonics on you is if you have nothing to do with Hawaii. Israel would none of me would hearken not to my voice. So I let him go after the stubbornness of their heart. Where, where did you go? Did you end up Moorish? Is that where you wanted to go? You found some harmonics? The cold didn't excite you. Freedom doesn't excite you. So slavery does excite you. I'm excited by freedom. More excited than shiny things and paper money and plastic cards and cryptocurrency. <laughs> I'm excited by freedom. I don't think freedom has to be what they want to make it be technologically this and technologically that. I think that's like social media. That's just a way to chase the new thing. Oh, there's a new TikTok is this and this, this and this. Look, man, I... I went into this matrix as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm headed out. <laughs> I got out of YouTube jail. We got two strikes on this channel. You know, I'm just popping off because, you know, we don't know when they're going to come and say, hey, you violated some policy about the tenderoni. Yeah. So, you know, we just popping off. The backup channel link is below. But either way, find us exclusively at 432 drop.com dragon child what it do not can feel flags popping off <sighs> oh, wow man yo that's funny this reminds me, uh, <laughs> someone left a comment. They say, oh, uh, you know, y'all should have inverted the rainbow because this rainbow represents the LG such and such and such and yada, yada. But, you know, we should invert the rainbow because the chakra goes, man. You know, I was watering my grass uh, yesterday, man. And you know how you see rainbow when you put the water in the sprinkler when the sun hits. And I saw exactly this rainbow. I don't see an inverted rainbow. I understand, you know, chakra and raisin. All these colors are Awaz colors. I don't, if the rainbow was upside down, inside out, backwards, forward, that's all Hawa, man. You can't make this rainbow mean this and that rainbow mean that because the reflection of the rainbow. <laughs> That rainbow ain't reflected when that sprinkler would <laughs> come on and I see a natural rainbow in the sky. This is all I see. So inverted, non-inverted, all these colors are Hawaii. All your days of the week are Hawaii. You can't take a day and say this day is Saturn day. What day was it before you put that frequency on? This day is Monday, moon day. Wednesday is miracle is, miracle is. That's Thoth Day. I mean, stop letting these people, man, <laughs> put stamps on your colors, put stamps on your numbers, your gematria, try to make this mean this and that mean that. Inverted, uh, exverted, you know, all these are Hawaii's. This is Hawaii's flow. The rainbow belongs to Hawaii. You can't invert your way out of that. That's the rainbow. These are Hawaii's colors. This is a wise sign. You know what I'm saying? So AI of Dragon Child, man. Just had to address this rainbow situation, man. This is our covenant. So Hawaii doesn't have to flood us out and reset us like that and this. You know, the dragon fire can come and pop off the right way, Sodom and Gomorrah style, man. But we ain't all got to be flooded out like that. Hawaii made a covenant with all living things, man. And we represent it, man. So. Don't let these, you know, 
uh, other jabronis, you know, put meanings behind things that they can't claim. You know, all these colors are being, okay, so the blue should mean crip and the red, that means blood. So when I look at the rainbow, there's crips and bloods. Stop it, man. Because <laughs> y'all cut it out, man. Yeah, these are Hawaii's colors. You can try to claim your set. You can try to claim your agenda with the rainbow, but you're going to have to give the colors back because they don't belong to you. Halai Hawa. We come together and we pop it off. Hey, free Phoenix, man. Free Phoenix, man. Just had to address that, man. Hey, Dragon Child, we popping off. Let's go. My people hearken not to my voice. And Israel didn't want nothing to do with me, man. So I let them go after the stubbornness of their heart that they might walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people will hearken unto me. Not the hijack city. Not their JC. Not their prophets. And the holy mountain. We're going to get some more of that. That Israel will walk in my ways, not their ways in Islam and their ways in Christianity and Judaism. My ways. Not the remix and the remake. And this is the perfection of the uh, script. So this is the this. Keeping the code, man. And what's the one that was mainly, you know, yelling at you, letting you know what's really good, man. He's letting you know this ain't no good, no strange guy. That's rule number one. So before you like, but all the 613 commandments, I can't, I can't even remember all this. Start right here. I promise you, my love, you start right here, you're gonna simplify everything. You go directly to your creator, you're gonna simplify everything. No power before your power, you're gonna simplify everything. You'll see clearly, Allah Hawa. Because, you know, Hawaii ain't just jumping off about everything else. Like, he's jumping off about you worshiping these foreign gods, man. He brought you out the land of Egypt because of all this Atlantean hijack. Atlantis, Atlantis, Atlantis is all they worship. But they're doing it where X marks the spot. At the Battle of Tippecanoe with the Kumse and Tenskatahawa, the prophet. I don't think this was popping off uh, the way they would like to map it. I don't think this was popping off before the battle, man. I think this is a process of a hijack. And whatever harmonics is popping off, whatever mountain is popping off, whatever sacred trees are popping off are being hijacked. You want us to believe this is ancient? That this was already here? Hey, maybe the mountain was here, but the intentions that's being put on the mountain was that here. Maybe the harmonics were here, but was the tuning of it to the pitch you're tuning it to? <laughs> was that here? We're asking questions as we try, up. If you're going to be in our classroom, you're going to have to fall back and let us ask these questions. If you got something positive and, you know, something that can connect things for a noggin, and you want to help a noggin and help a noggin. But in the days of uh, the blindness, the veils come off, man. We ain't in your classroom stirring up nothing. We over here. So if you're over here, be over here respectfully. Because you witness it.
Oh, that my people would listen, that Israel would walk in my ways, keep the code. I would soon subdue their enemies. Dang. <laughs> That's why we're taking our time in Preston John 85, man. You think it's about information, it's about vibration, man. It's about our enemies being subdued and the reason why they don't want us to tribe up or really the reason why they don't even want us to remember who we are so that the name of Israel is no more in remembrance. They want the name of Hawa to be no more in remembrance. They want Mossack, the founder, to be a fragment of the past, forgotten, a lost memory. They changed our timelines, pushed our prophets back a thousand years, made us disconnected, spun us on the ball, and told us we was from Africa. Damn. Put us in 440 hertz, <laughs> flipped the map upside down, all this for what? Got to speak in English, death language, all these spells, curses. Still praying on our downfall. And here we are, and still we rise. I would soon subdue their enemies if Israel would walk in my ways and if my people would hearken unto me. Oh, that my people would listen. That the tribe would walk in my ways and keep the code. I would make easy work out their enemies, man. And turn my hand against their adversaries, the haters, the haters, the haters of Hawa should dwindle away before him and their punishment should endure forever. They should also be fed with the fat of wheat and with honey out of the rock would I satisfy you. This is a promise, man. If you walk in the creator's ways, we're gonna get back on our Cold Keeper series. <laughs> Allow, uh, if you walk in the creator's ways, this is a promise. This is why you went into that Ruach Tardy Ma. This is why Hawaii made sure you couldn't even wake up before it was time to wake up. Because by default, you would have woke up, kept the code, and by default, Hawaii would have subdued your enemies. By default, Hawaii would have, you know, turned his hand against your adversaries, man. Mama would have raised her hand on your adversaries, on your Satans on your haters, the haters of Hawa, they would have been dwindled, man. Their punishment is forever. But you would be fed with the fat of wheat and with the honey out of the rock. If only you keep the cold. And in all this talking about my ways, the one example Hawa gave you so that you ain't confused to about fringes and beards and all the Israelite things you want to do, the Israelite names and titles. <laughs> oh, the, oh, your feast days, Israel. Vanity. Get that in part two of the Code Keeper series. Vanity. Your feast days are vanity. Oh, my Shabbat is yada yada. Vanity, man. Not when there's a strange power among you. But my Yahweh shot, I must go through Christ to get to the creator. Blasphemy. So why you ended up in Egypt? Serving strange gods. This is how they set up Morocco and crossed out Tippecanoe, Tacombe, and the prophet Titska. Hawa. Replace them with their prophets. 
got the Baphomet all upon you, got the Baalus all upon you. The temple of Baal was shut down by Elijah. Mount Caramel, the holy mountain. Oh, look at here, another holy mountain in the same location. <laughs> Morocco, right under Great Lakes. While they migrate westward. Psalms 81. Psalms 82. Hawa stands in the congregation. Hawa of Hawa in the midst of the judges he judges. How long will you judge unjustly and respect the persons of the wicked? Judge the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and destitute. Rescue the poor and needy. Deliver them out of the hand of the wicked they know not, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are moved. I said, you are God-like beings. <laughs> what does it mean? Now, this is, you know, go back to the top. It says, a why stands in the congregation of a why? In the midst of the judges, he judges. And then it starts with the judgment, right? How long will you judge unjustly? That's what Hawa is saying to the wicked. To the judicial systems, this is what he's talking about. How long will you judge unjustly and respect the persons of the wicked? And he's trying to let him know, judge the poor and the fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and destitute, rescue the poor and needy, deliver them out the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are moved. You are God-like beings. And all of you, sons of the most high, daughters, for why? Nevertheless, you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O Hawa, judge the earth, for you shall possess all nations. They fall like men, they die like princes. They are God-like, but they die like men. We just read in Psalms 81, you ain't listening. When you don't hearken, when you don't walk in the creator's ways, Although you are like Hawa, and although you are the sons and daughters of the Most High, look at us, man, dying like men. Falling like one of the princes. What's a prince to a God, right? You're more worried about your princely titles than being the sons and daughters of Hawa. 
that's a higher title than your princes and princesses and queens and kings. You're playing pageant, your pageantry. Being the son of a wa, daughter of a wa. You know, that's where the presta <laughs> comes into play. That's that's the priesthood, that's the con. Those are the great, what they call more, which means great. I want more rice cakes. I want more. I want a greater amount. There ain't no greater than the most high. You have a natural inheritance as sons and daughters, because that that was a you know given to you as anointed, as an anointed tribe. You're supposed to be the saviors of the world. Through the code you keep, you can save everyone. But for you, <laughs> Hawa is your only savior. Without that, we go about in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are moved. Did you forget who you are? You've been dying so long you forgot who you are? Seeds of Hawa? But when you pop off, especially when you're out of cold popping off, people get real antsy, man. People really start wanting what you got because they feel like, hey, Here's an opportunity. Here's an opportunity to take what they got. Psalms 83. Song of Asaph. Psalm of Asaph. Oh, Hawa, keep not your silence, hold not your peace, be not still, Hawa, for your enemies, your haters, are in an uproar. And they that hate you, have lifted up their head. You see, when they hate on, um, when they hate on Hawa, they're hating on you, right? When they don't care about the creator, they don't care about the creator's seed. Sons and daughters, they want to smash you. They're like, where's your creator now? They want to smash us. They want to tear us to bits because, you know, we were so protected here in the promised land. But you didn't want to listen, right? We didn't want to walk in Hawa's ways. We say, no, nah, we can bypass. We can circumvent that. We can just be great without our power because <laughs> we're just so used to being great. Who needs it? We got power. Look how great we are. Even if we're half as great, we're still the greatest. Nah, man, nah, man. Without your power, your enemies get in the uproar. They start talking about your wing web, looking at you up and down, like, where's your power? I mean, yeah, you're still powerful, but I think we got you now. You know, I think you're right where we need to be. We still need to team up and make a super team and come on you, but I think it's possible that we can get you. Not us by ourselves. We're going to have to make some treaties. But after we make them treaties, we think we can get you. We're going to have to, you know, poison you and get you sick first and then fight. We don't want to fight you at full power, of course. I mean, we you know we are cowards, by the way. But, you know, our cowardice is going to make us, you know, make crafty counsels. And then I think we can get you. And I that's how powerful you are as treasure one. They hold crafty converse. <laughs> They're having crafty conversations against Hawa's people, which lets you know Hawa has a people. Don't let them trick you into thinking it's just the God of the world and everyone's God is God. My God is your God and your God is my God. Managa, that's Christianity. That's a universal, that's a universal poo sandwich. It ain't never rock like that. 
It's been tribal since day one. The fact that you're not thinking tribally, it means you've been invaded and brainwashed. And now you, oh, don't separate from us. Why are you taking it so serious? I wasn't supposed to be conquered forever, man. Only a conqueror wants you to forget about being conquered, loathe you back to sleep. Come on, brother. Learn some sciences, man. <laughs> nah, man. You've taken counsel against Hawa's treasured ones, and this is why we're here, searching for Dawi. Because this is a link into what happened. Once you KTC, once you keep the code and go directly to your creator, then you say, what happened? And you say, David's footprint is everywhere. And y'all don't like us talking, David. You don't want to talk, David, and help us with our investigation, right? You, if anything, you want to throw a little, you know, some shade and, you know, do your thing. But no, nah, you don't want to talk Preston, man. It's not in you. It's not for you to talk Preston. Preston is a frequency. It's, you can read some books, and, but you're not going to know what, where to go, what, what to connect and the purpose behind it got to be pure water. It can't be so you could be hot because you got a hot topic. It can't be to show how smart you are. That can't be your purpose. You can't come into this press to flow of vanity. That's not how we got here. We got here by emptying our cup. We said, <laughs> apparently we're supposed to be seeking. Apparently, there's one shepherd. Apparently, Dawi is being raised up again for a noggin. Let's get it, man. We're talking about the treasure ones. <laughs> this is Presta 85. We're talking, you know, we're talking Naga talk, man. Because the only way Nagaville can survive is if the treasure ones are in code. So don't ever separate Presta, this investigation from the Cold Keeper series, you know what I'm saying? From, you know, the indigenous truth that we bring in, but it's always going to connect no matter how deep we go into, you know, chronology and all these, you know, histories you're bringing together. It comes back to the treasured ones, the Cold Keepers. And coming back so we can have our own, you know, one consent. They made one consent against the Naga. You got to make one consent to be in cold with Hawa, to break this spell. And we gotta do it together. We need everybody on this, man. They've taken counsel against your treasure ones. They have come, they have said, come, let us cut them off. From being a nation. You're no longer a nation. Let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance, which lets you know that it wasn't the name of Israel we were called, you know what I'm saying? I-S-R-A-E-L, you know, whatever translation this is, whatever we called it, ourselves under the creator under the house of jacob it ain't even in remembrance man you know what i'm saying the corniest thing i ever hear is oh well you know you know uh all this is all about isis ra and l managa we didn't <laughs> we didn't put this together for us they already are called the state of Israel and this and this and this. We're coming up, you know, in the tracks of what they've done in Judaism and trying to get the babies out the bathwater, trying to rescue the babies, man, trying to get the truth. These are their translations. Israelites do not call themselves Israelites or the house of Israel. <laughs> All these are different translations. The name Solomon is not ex how Solomon would say his name, is it? David would not call himself David. 
And the Preston never called himself Preston. So when you remove the titles, you start to remove the hijack and then say, okay, but there are treasured ones. All right, let's start there. Hawa exists. Let's, let's really start there, right? They call God, but we're just talking dogs and we're going to talk some dogs. Don't, don't, don't trip. <laughs> it always comes back to the dog heads that converted to Christianity and everything else, right? The dog-headed tribes, they, they needed an alliance. They wanted to make a confederacy to cut Israel off so the name is no more in remembrance. Not only did you not know <laughs> that you're connected, you know, to these great tribes connected to the inheritance of the creator, but the name, you can't remember. Dang, you can't even remember your own name. That is humbling, man. They got their titles and all these family histories and all these things that we don't even know our name. For they have consulted together with one consent against you do they make a covenant. A what? A treaty. We're going to talk treaty because we've been talking treaty. Right? They're migrating, you know, during these treaties, right? 17, you know, 85 pieces of friendship and before that and after that, they made a covenant with a bunch of other nations to cut you off from being a nation. They've cut off treasured ones because you were in a treasured place and because you are treasured. Even Hitler knew that. I mean, you know, he knows who the Jews are, the Jewels, the Jewels. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. We're talking a treaty. So whoever's involved in these treaties, the pieces of friendship, whoever's migrating, had a hand in the treaties from a long time. Oh yeah, it's the same players, man, right? Philistia and Tyree and Assyria and the children of Lot. Oh, that ain't, that ain't surprising. That train is never late. It's called out. It's, it's, it's clear. You know, they didn't intend for us to wake up and know who we are and know who they are and say, oh, whoa, you guys are such and such. You're the children of Lot and where it is. Now, they wanted us to be in Christianity, thinking all these are, you know, Caucasian tribes, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, they didn't want us to look at this and, Start banging on the children of Lot. Nah, man, we ain't trying to, you know, overly ignite some ancient feud with our brothers and this and this and that. But we got to ask the question. We got to, you know, see if we can piece together something that's been splintered apart and why or why did this covenant take place? We just read that we weren't listening. So that's the first reason. But what are they all getting out of it? Land. You know, their kingdoms and their crowns. <laughs> Power, control, right? Mm -hmm. 
do unto them as unto Midian. What happened to Midian? What happened to Sisera, Jabi, and Kishan? Oh, who were destroyed at Endor. So they were all destroyed. So, you know. We can't make no treaties with tribes that are to be destroyed unless you start making some changes right away. You know, that's between you and Hawaii, but they became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb, Zeeb. And Zaba and Zamuna and all their princes who said, let us take to ourselves in possession the habitations of Hawa. Hijack city. You thought you could take into your possession the habitations of Hawa? Make it holy to your powers. It didn't work in my Mount Carmel with Elijah. Mount Carmel didn't protect you. Harmonics didn't protect you then. You must have forgot who you're dealing with. I know it's been a long time. There's a lot of unbelievers. I guess perhaps we need a demo. Elijah's all about demos. <laughs> oh, my power, make them like the world in dust, as stubble before the wind, as the fire that burns the forest, and as a flame that sets the mountains ablaze. So pursue them with your tempest and affright them with your storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name. Whoa, this is major, man. I'm glad I can't read it. Pursue them with your tempest, right? Affright them with your storm. What storm? Didn't we just say that they got some type of meteor storm supposed to be popping off right now? So <laughs> not a meteor shower. They upgraded it to a meteor storm, right? I'm talking dragons, my night. That's what you are frightened about. Not just some silly little storm. You scared of them dragons. This is why you had your dragon magic to tame these dragons, to subdue these dragons, to slay the alchemical dragons with the creation of opposites. So you created these opposites and then made them as a straw man to protect you and your identity and your power, and your control. And you got us just fighting the whites, fighting the whites, but white means pure. We're not fighting any pure souls. We're not fighting any code keepers. W-I-G-H-T white means devil, and that's more like it. Yeah, we are fighting adversaries. You created a straw man, you created opposites to slay the dragon. I mean, just, just look up General Muck Muck, man. You you understand. They, they created our opposites and then subdued us with opposites, black and white, <laughs> black or white. Let's go, man. Fill their faces with shame, oh, wow. that they may seek your name, oh, oh wow. This is why you need us to be a tribe. 
You need us so that you can reach this level, the level of shame. As we have to go through our shame, we forgot our name. So the name of Israel is no longer in remembrance. That's a shameful, humbling process. You too have to be purified. You can't just hide out, shake up the timelines, reclassify yourselves, make your treaties with whatever power and riches and whatever, you know, and think you're going to sit this out. Even when you know to do better, because really I'm talking to our generation. We could read about biblical times, which was really very recent, you know. But we can make a difference. We can actually come together, my naga. Like, we're really doing this so that you may seek Hawaii. He didn't say fill their faces with shame, you know, and never let them have an opportunity. I mean, but you do have to get this work. Because when you get this work, it's the only time you're really ever going to be humble enough to seek a why. And I know you think you've been seeking the creator because that's what you've been taught. But you can't be seeking without his ways, right? You can't be seeking and have no connection with rule number one, no power before your power. And if your prayer ends in the name of someone else, and your prayer involves all these other names. You're not seeking a wow. They're not seeking your name. A wow. So let them be ashamed and let them be scared for life. You say, how is that possible? We just talked about setting the mountains on fire. <laughs> we just talked about the storms that set mountains ablaze. We talked about the flame and the fire. You ain't putting dragons together with none of this. None of this. Okay. Elijah popping off fire from the heavens and you just think it's fire coming from heaven. <laughs> and then his angel the angel homie pops up and he's like, yeah, I've been here the whole time sending fire down from heaven. <laughs> yeah, man, dragons, you know, dragons and prestors go hand in hand. You know what I mean? You don't want us to be prestors because you don't want these dragon. You don't want this dragon fire because with this dragon fire, it lets you know what the order is. You know what I mean? And you don't want that because you know you can't go against it once these dragons are popping off your faces are filled with shame so that you may seek a while. let them be ashamed and frightened forever and let them be abashed and perish because very few is going to be able to humble out and really seek a while you know very few that they may know that it is you alone whose name is ah, wow, the most high over everything. <laughs> most high over all the earth. I can't make this stuff up. Five eyes, my take the wheel, man. All right, let's have fun, man. Uh, yeah. Akkad was the seat of the Akkadian Empire. We're going to talk chronology and all these ancient empires, but follow me now. The first multinational political entity in the world, founded by Sargon the Great, who unifies Mesopotamia under his rule and set the model for later Mesopotamian kings to follow to attempt to surpass. 
So Sargon unified Mesopotamia. And Akkad is the seat of the Akkadian Empire. Founded by Sargon. So Sargon is popping off out of Akkadia in Mesopotamia or Mesoamerica, but follow me now. He unites the tribes. <laughs> well, let's go. The Akkadian Empire set a number of firsts, which would later become standard. No one knows where the city of Akkad was located. Uh oh. Well, I guess it's wide open for a conversation. I mean, no one knows. No one knows where Katie is located. <laughs> Jeez, I mean, you know, C's and K's. C's and K's, you know, it's crazy, crazy talk. You put a C instead of a K, suddenly, you know, in America, talking about a Katie. Katie, a Katie, a Katie. Atlantic Ocean, New England. Oh, boy. Yeah, man. I mean, you know. The Bible refers to a cod in Genesis 10. 10 through 12, which states the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was Babel, Ereka, Akkad, and Kalne, and the land of Shinar. So just like they're going deep into the history of 2000 BCs into Akkadia, the Bible <laughs> is also validating that Akkad is very ancient. I mean, you're talking about the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom. You're talking ancient talk. And I'm just trying to make a correlation so we see that Acadia and everything to do with this Acadian dragon and all the stuff we're breaking down, you know, with this uh, <laughs> Acadian green. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, we, we can't help it, man. You know, free Phineas, man. Free Phineas, man. Four through two, the job is all about Acadian Green Dragons, man. <laughs> Acadian Green Dragons, I mean, you know, people. You know, do mention these dragons from time to time. You definitely got to get back to the homie Mohawk, man. The oldest living of the Acadian green dragon species currently known. Mohawk has been alive to witness the American Revolutionary War. Is that right, big homie Mohawk? You know, we always talking free Phineas. You know, we always got to give the a hop, you know, to Mohawk as well. I mean, you know, that's that's big homie right there, too. You know what I'm saying? We're talking to Katie and Green Dragons. You know, they they tribed up. This ain't no play play. Now, American Revolutionary War is all this, man. <laughs> Chica Magua, Chica Magua. See how it just... Come on, man. How can I belly flop from Acadia, Sumerian, ancient Acadia, to B biblical Akkad, to the Acadian Green Dragon, to Mohawk, which chases to the American Revolutionary War, which chases to Shikamag with the Kumse? Come on. That is a hell of a belly flop, man. 
I mean, to to surf that wave, you you must be doing this for a long time, man. Drop Nation, we've been doing this for a long time. No one else can make this connection if they're not on this wave. The Katie and Green Dragon, Phineas, Tr Fort Tryon Park, holding big homie Phineas. These are the these are big homies that were fighting with the Shikamagua, man. Not against the Shikamagua. But against all these hijacks that were seeking a covenant on your head bone, making a covenant with one consent on the treasured ones to cut them off for being a nation. So the name of Yashra is no more remembrance. The American Revolutionary War is the Tecumse, Shikamagua, Seminole War, all this is the same. Tecumse's war, he's trying to tribe them up like Avatar, you know? He had to tribe up all the tribes to fight against the hijack. He was Tecumse in that sense, you know what I'm saying? He was tribing up these tribes. Some, some got along, some had beef. But the, the difference is Avatar, they fought and they fought together and they won, man. We're going to get back into it, but yeah, you know, not all the tribes saw it the same way as the Kumsa. You know, they enjoyed the spoils that they were getting from the hijack from who they called the great white father in Washington. They enjoyed the treaties and the covenants against us. They enjoy the spoils that they were getting from making us no more in remembrance. They enjoy the spoils from cutting us off from being a nation. They enjoy the treasures from the treasure ones. And during this American Revolutionary War, 1776 popping off, you telling me? Y'all telling me this was already Morocco? And the big homie Mohawk was witnessing it? Or was he putting that work? Living in Acadia National Park, which used to be called Acadia National Dragon Preserve or something like that, but they took out the Dragon Preserve and now it's just called Acadia National Park, Managa. Do you think it's play play? I mean, look, man. I mean, you, you gotta, you know, we all gotta see clearly. You know what I mean? We all gotta see clearly. Love to my Managa surfing the wave on the IG. We've been having fun, man. We having fun, man. Get up in the drop chat. You get all the drop. Love to Skywalker 47, because he got the drop. Dropping on the Acadian Green Dragon. Yeah, is it Acadia? Is it the Acadian Empire? This whole connection with Sargon, all this ancient stuff. Are we saying it's a different thing? We're going to talk about these parallels, so... You know, this Akkadian, you know, this Georgia, these events in the Hebrew Bible. So the Hebrew, you know, connection with Akkadian is clear, but the connection with Hebrews in America is not. It's more fuzzy, right? We're going to come back to this. Remember, no one knows where the city of Akkad was located. So we're not going crazy when we investigate, right? They want to keep us over there in Mesopotamia. You don't know where it's located. So <laughs> why not come to the old world? Why not come to India Superior with that? Why not come to Big Dragon India Superior with that? Acadia. Why not come to La China and, you know, Cathay? with that 
the land of the pressed. Let's connect this Sargon with this Acadian. Let's connect it with the Acadian Green Dragon. They claim not to know where the Boston Tea Party is, but nah, we digging deep. Bartholomew Gosno recorded the first dragon. Funny how this map on slide six looks exactly like the Acadian Green Dragon's habit, habitat. And look on the map, Acadia. Y'all need to get that contra. 432 to drop and raise up the Dragon Naga Wisdom. Amaru Khan. Let's check out slide six, man. You know, first, you know, you got the Green Dragon became the source of pride for early Americans and was often used as a standard. This is the standard. The Green Dragon is the standard. Let's go. <laughs> During the revolution for strength and independence. Mohawk is Mohawk is representing it, right? Mohawk is witnessing or popping off during this revolutionary war. But they want us to go with the narrative of America versus Britain. These Americans fighting Britain were not Americans. These are hijacks on the shores of the Amaru. And whoever they're calling British weren't looking like that either. You know, a lot of them were connected through the tribes with the Kumse and the tribes in Russia and all the Israelite tribes that were still in Scotland and Israel. You know what I'm saying? They changed the face of all this. Uh, these Americans weren't Americans. The Americans weren't the Americans. And these British, you know, that they were afraid of, that they demonized. Oh, the British are coming. The British are coming. They were afraid of the alliances that the Kumse was making on they, you know, hijack head bones. And these other tribes, Indian tribes, they were making alliances, you know, with these hijacks that just wanted everything. They were making hijacks, you know, friends. They were making friends out of hijacks. They were showing them the way. They were giving them the secrets. They were showing them how to slay the dragon. Bunker Hill overlooking Boston had at one time been the site of a dragon lair. Benjamin Franklin proposed that the green dragon become the national emblem, but it lost out to the bald eagle. We read something about Push Mataha being called the eagle. And Tecumseh's name means dragon, shooting star, they say, right? We're going to talk meteors. We're going to talk meteors. So you got a dragon versus eagle situation, you know what I mean? And here goes this eagle, you know, winning over the dragon as the standard all of a sudden. The first recorded account of a green dragon was in 1602 when English explorer Bartholomew Gosno, while mapping New England, reported seeing a large dragon species inhabiting many of the harbors. It is understood that dragons had lived for millennia, thousands of years at least, along the New England coastline of North America, ranging as far north as Newfoundland and as far south as the Hudson River Valley. Yeah, connective Boston Tea Party with the Green Dragon Tavern. Let's go. And this might be a little small, but it says Acadian National Dragon Preserve. Like we said, it's now it's called Acadian National Park, right? But here it's called Acadian National Dragon Preserve. ANDP, here's the stamp. They're looking for Phineas. In 1978, a new dragon enclosure was built for Phineas, and his health and attendance at the park dramatically improved. Today, Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity in America. So what happened to Mohawk? How did they slay the dragon? Man, the only dragon alive, man. What happened to Mohawk, man? Here's the, the coastal, you know, 
habitation throughout Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, all that, man, you know. Then it got pushed to the purple area. And now Phoenix is the last great American dragon. And he was put into this circus with P.T. Barnum. And they burn up, you know, all his sisters and brothers. They burned up a bunch of baby dragons. And a big report came out and said a bunch of whales were boiled alive. And we said, well, where's Acadia, man? Because it's right here on the map. But I thought, boss. I thought, I mean, they're telling us that no one knows where the city of Acadia is located. Acadia. <laughs> Canada, Virginia, you know, it's right here in America, right with the, you know, Acadian uh, green dragon habitat. And Bartholomew put them on a map. This is Bartholomew's Gosmo's map of the Skywalker. This is great drop, man. Body bag. This is not play play. Oh, this is just out of a, you know, dragon uh, species book. You know, nah, man. Th these are, this is cartography, man. Substantiating recon. We got the map from Bartholomew with the Cadia on it at the same place as this Acadian green dragon habitat. Acadia National Dragon Preserve. And what's up with the big homie Mohawk living in Acadia National Park now in Maine? Mohawk bore witness to the slaughter of most of his kin. Damn. During the days of whaling. Well. Oh, whales got boiled alive by P.T. Barnum and them. Is that what we say? Told y'all we'd be back in this Phineas flow, man. The whales got boiled alive. Today, Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity in America. The home for the Acadia National Dragon Preserve, a large stretch of coastal land protected for the Acadian green dragon to use as nesting grounds. From New York City, we traveled to Boston and then to Mount Desert Island, where we will spend a couple of weeks Traveling with Captain Avery Winslow of the Slope Wind Dragon, something like that. He will be our guide while we study and draw the dragons of this region. So he's just going around making sketches. They they are around here making covenants. Where's Acadia? I mean, it was a great empire, right? <laughs> It wouldn't just be in one little place. After the fall of the Akkadian Empire, the people of Mesopotamia eventually coalesced into two major Akkadian speaking nations, Assyria in the north and Babylonia in the south. Okay. Beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was Babel. All right, and then we got this Mount Caramel flow <laughs> where Elijah's coming in with the dragon fire. I mean, yeah, Katie is a big deal. They coming in with the welling with harpooners. When harpooners began killing dragons to protect their catches, or was the welling all about slaying dragons? When his species was listed as an 
danger, the Acadian Green Dragon became protected species in 1973. Think it's play play. Right? As the number of his species plummeted to only 100 adult dragons. Since that time, the numbers of his race have since rebounded, climbing back to a substantial number around 500 dragons or more. Today, that number is slowly climbing. While over 270 years old, at least, Mohawk is a dragon in his prime. And perhaps the most successful parent out of the known population, having raised almost 50 offspring since his nest were first monitored in 1975. As a result, most of the newly mature female dragons recorded in the Acadia area are either his daughters or granddaughters. He is often seen by whale watchers when out hunting, as his diet consists heavily of dolphins and large fish, such as the great white sharks or blue fin tuna. He is accustomed to the presence of people near his lair, but is genuinely content to ignore them, often preferring to sleep in plain sight since he fears little from them. Despite his tolerance, this tolerance and acceptance of people near his lair, it may be remembered that Mohawk is a wild animal. It should never be approached, but as he can easily kill a man with a single swipe from his paw or from a fiery blast of his flaming breath. Recently, specialized tracking tags have been attached to Mohawk scales, allowing him to be followed on social media and allowing authorities to warn the populace should he come within range of heavily populated areas. A drawing of a dragon from the Dracopedia series, Mohawk is only mentioned a few times in the book, so I give him a more developed backstory. This is the first dragon I have tried shading with my new techniques. And the original drawing is being sent as a present to Samantha and Madeline O'Connor, daughters of the late artist William O'Connor, who created the Dragopedia series and passed away unexpectedly last year, January 2018. Twelve-year-old Samantha went on to help finish the Dragopedia field guide after her father's passing. And so I felt that it was the right thing to send her and her four-year-old little sister this as a gift. I sincerely hope they enjoy it and wish them wonderful, happy life. <laughs> Amen. We getting the babies out the bath water. You know, they can add whatever backstories they want to Mohawk. We know that this Acadia ain't no play play. And as long as we know that this Acadia is popping up on these maps, we know that uh, <laughs> this habitation definitely, you know, has some serious drop too, especially when it's being changed from the Acadian National Dragon Preserve to Acadia National Park. That means there's truth behind this story. And although they say this dragon species is flourishing, apparently Phineas is the last or the only great dragon alive in captivity. So whereas Mohawk might have been considered a, a great dragon, not just any dragon alive, you know, Phineas is not the only dragon alive. You know, we're saying the last great American dragon, Acadian dragon. Now, this Acadia parallels <laughs> with uh, these events from the Hebrew Bible. The Bible and myth in Antoni, Antonin Malitz Pelagi, Pelagi, La Sherit, Paul G. Socket. The parallels between Pelagi's return to Acadia from exile in Georgia and events in the Hebrew Bible are striking and revealing. The story is the biblical account of the Exodus in a modern context, enhanced and reinforced by elements of mythology. 
So, you know, if you start digging on like this Akkadian Bible situation, you know, it's a lot of, you know, mystery to it. Let me know if you get like a good PDF of, I guess they call it the Akkadian Bible or whatever the case is, but, you know, whatever mythology is, you know, we, we definitely got to dig on it. The many similarities to the biblical account are in some cases direct and others indirect. I propose to make these parallels clear and to suggest associations with some major motifs of world mythology in order to show how the dominant theme and images confer a larger, possibly universal meaning on the narrative. The novel, the novel represents the fusion of chronological time. Yeah, we're going to talk chronology. Matter of fact, we're about to talk chronology, man. <laughs> we're about to get an oldie but goodie and talk some chronology, love to the temple. We're about to get into just, just, some uh, parallel timelines in history. The OG, man, you already know what it is, man. Anatoly for the Manco. We're about to get into some parallel timelines. Because we're talking parallels, man. And we're talking timelines, man. And we're talking to Katie. And I'm just saying, you know, is this Acadia the same thing as the Acadia that we see popping up on the maps? in America and what does it have to do with the Acadian Green Dragon and the Revolutionary War since Mohawk was witnessing the Revolutionary War and Mohawk is popping off. He said Mohawk had to witness his people die. bore witness to the slaughter of most of his kin. Okay. Hey, man. Hey, out to the big homie Mohawk, man. And as always, you already know, <laughs> free Phineas, man. Skywalker, you got the drop, man. And we in the drop, drop chatter. Chat, 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 chat. You know, hoping you're enjoying the wave, man. Enjoying the flow. Up in here, up in here, man. Oh, yeah, we got some Anion drop. We might drop on that, too, man. Might got to drop on that, too. Oh, yeah, we got some parallel timeline drop. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about. Okay, okay. So, first of all, man, Acadian history, man, right? Mythological time. So, this novel that's been put together is representing the fusion of chronological time and mythological time. Acadian history with, with what they call eternal cycles. A perpetual life. And of biblical imagery and that of ancient mythology. So too, there is a fusion on a spiritual level of a profane, the profane and the sacred as the Akkadians are portrayed as deceptively irreverent for their rebirth affirms the principle of destiny and divine mission. What is this Acadia business about, man? The general structure of the narrative loosely follows the biblical text. The first chapters introduce us to Pelagi, Belloni, and the other characters describe the situations and establish the purpose of their journey, just as Genesis describes the patriarchs in their times. <clears throat> and points to an historical mission. The novel then proceeds to chronicle the journey itself, including the fighting and rebellion corresponding to the deliverance and apostasy of Exodus. The remainder of the novel, except for the last two chapters in the epilogue, concerns the consolidation of the wonders into a people paralleling the same phenomenon in Leviticus and Numbers. So they really are trying to parallel 
your story. The final part narrates Pelagi's address to the people, her death, and her people's arrival in Acadia. You know, we got Acadia popping off as Deuteronomy recounts Moses' invocation to the Israelites, his death, and the arrival in the promised land. Man, this is, you know, we got to dig deeper on uh, this Pelagi. You know what I mean? I just saw Acadia. And I got excited and I see how they're connecting all this with promised land. I mean, they're connecting all of it with promised land, man. So, you know, keep all this in mind when we dig on Akkad. And no one knows where the city of Akkad is located. <laughs> and the Kadian Green Dragon is, you know, a thing of the past. And Israel's name is no longer in remembrance. But Akkad, even with the seas, are popping up all over the place. Oh, man, I mean, I'll leave this for you, but, you know, you can connect the Akkadians with the Egyptians and the Hebrews and Ahab to the bro. Sorry, I can't think of your name off the top of my, my head bone, but Ahab to you, because <laughs> uh, you're the one that pointed it out and said, you know, you got to connect this Akkadia with Egypt. And, you know, I mean, we keep talking about Akkadia with Phineas and all that, and we still ain't really bringing it in on home to what's happening with the Hebrews coming out of Egypt and all that, right? So, but then we're reading about a Mohawk witnessing <laughs> what's popping off, witnessing the slaughter, witnessing the Revolutionary War. And now we can see coming out of Egypt, man. Going into Egypt, going into Babylon captivity all oh, this is such recent history man shikamagwa 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 we're going to talk to come say shikamagwa right now we're going to just fall back you know i'm gonna get a couple quick drops uh you know you know one love to aqua tie you know i want to go ahead and check on bam bam because you know we ain't we ain't checked on bam bam in a minute i told Aqua Tire, we're going to start checking in on Bam Bam. You don't do too many, you know, drops. You know, I guess you don't want to be checked up on <laughs> a whole lot, man. But y'all want to see Bam Bam build some stuff, man. We, you know, we're building for Joy World, man. We're, we're building, you know, for Nagaville. And most of all, we're building for Hawa, you know. So, you know, maybe Bam Bam could show us a couple of things, man. Um then we got to look at some parallel timelines in history. And as we come out of this talking chronology, you know, we'll get into, you know, back into, you know, some of this genealogy, you know, uh, some real important stuff, man. Uh, where we left off last time in 84, oh man, on this Hushi Yukpa. You know, really surfing the wave and the connectivity. You know, they say she's the daughter of Father Choctaw, Mother Choctaw. She's the sister of Pushmataha, who, you know, declared war on Tukum. They said, man, I'll see you on a battlefield. I'm rocking with our new friends here, man. Hushiyukpa, bird, happy, happy bird, born in 1760 of the Kata people. And all this time we're digging on the Kas and the Ka and the Kata and the Kara Kata. And these, you know, in Cathay, you know, all this Kata is Cathay, man. <laughs> all this represents the people, you know, in this promised land, Takumse is fighting to preserve it fighting to preserve the lands. At the time, the lands were claimed by France, but would later become U.S. territory. Man. With the Mississippi, or excuse me, Louisiana Purchase, eventually the states of Alabama and Mississippi. So Hukpa, or Hushiyukpa, Mary James Garland. So, you know, push my taha. <laughs> So he married off his sister, right, to this hijack James Garland, who 
is Major James Garland, right? 1775. All right, he starts popping off this Tecumseh War. You know, it's already happening. You know, you know Shikamago War, what they call American Revolutionary War, is all about you, right? It's all about the Shikamago, all about the Cherokee that made no deals. Yeah. <laughs> made no deals, made no treaties. He was a Scot, formal British military officer, lived among the Choctaw. He lived among the Choctaw. It is reported that she was either sister or sister-in-law, the chief Pushmataha. Otherwise, her family origin is unknown. Her marriage to Garland occurs in seven, around 17... 75 and produces two known sons, John Garland and Michael Garland. So at this point, you got the Garlands. You don't know the genealogy or the connection with this who she and her connection with Push. <laughs> we'll just call him Push, man. Because he sure did push the Kumse out the way, man, to get to his treaties, right? And again, just like with the Maurice situation, whether you find yourself a descendant of this or that, what are you going to do? How are you going to make a difference, man? How are you going to help unite the tribes? We got to do the work that the Kumse wasn't able to do, that that push, you know what I'm saying, should have done, that the Kumse, you know, wish he could have done even better, you know what I'm saying? It was so much personal animosity between the Kumse and push. Push, man, he just couldn't do it, man. He, he, <laughs> he felt like the Kumse was just, you know, shining on him too much, man. I mean, maybe if the Kumse could do it again, you know, maybe he would have, you know, just approached everything much different from the jump with him. You know, maybe he would have had a better relationship, you know. But the Kumse, <laughs> he just had that power, you know what I'm saying? You know, he, he didn't have time to slow down and worry about these jabronis feelings about how he's shining, you know, how, how he's, you know, uh, you know, causing this reaction with the tribe to the tribe up and, you know what I mean, get back on cold with his brother, the prophet. We all, you know, wish we could have done better as Israelites. We wish we would have kept the code better. So we all are descendants and we all, all of our ancestors, you know, have had some level of failure, man. You know what I'm saying? We, in our lives, have a level of failure that we're dealing with, of course. So, of course, they did. They also had, you know, had victories, man. But this was a failure that we couldn't unite. So, who she here marries James, and they begot John, right? Ushi, back to genie.com. <laughs> now they say over here that she's the <laughs> daughter, father Choctaw and mother Choctaw. But that's all we know. Here they're called sun mythical and moon mythical. And here again, that's all they tell us. Because as far as it goes. So she marries James Garland, and together they have John Garland. John Garland has James the first, Samuel, Silas. Silas has Israel. Yeah. Israel's the father of Louisa. <laughs> and Louisa is the mother of William Henry Harrison, principal chief of the Choctaw Nation. And as we get the drop on Tecumseh and these council wars that they were trying to have to avoid whatever conflict, you know what I mean, and tribe up, 
this William Harrison was always in the middle of things. I mean, you know. You have this William Harrison, then you had another William Harrison. Yeah, we, we, oh, there we go. President William Henry Harrison. We went over this. So they're separated here by nearly a hundred year time shift. If we're talking about the same one that was called governor, but this one is connecting with old typical new. <laughs> and old typical new, you know, goes right into that map, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh man, <laughs> oh yeah. And just remember, man, just quickly with the Cherokee, with the Chickamauga, you talking about the ones that separated from the rest of the Cherokee during the American Revolutionary War, right? With Mohawks popping off in there, does the majority of the Cherokee wish to make peace with the American or wish to make treaties of peace, right? Just keep that in mind. When you see all these Chickamauga Wars popping off, that they wish to make no peace with the hijacks, and it went on all this time. <laughs> I mean, even into the Philippine Wars, which we know is also us. Yeah. Was it already Morocco? You say Morocco was already established here and just let the hijack roll up on all these indigenous people for hundreds of years. And just sat back and did nothing and took no side. <laughs> or is this the side that pushed Mataha to and the chalk tea with that chalk tall chicken saw that was rocking with him and whoever else, Upper Muscogee that was rocking with him, divide and conquer. And we had to fight our own knockers, our own brothers. I mean, it looks like we're saying clearly, man. What, do you, what about you, man? How y'all thinking? How y'all feeling about this? Are, are y'all seeing clearly yet? Old typical new. Right? Typical new, right? So he's named old typical new because that's how much work he put in. <laughs> how much bloodshed he put in for this to be established because this comes with a treaty. on your head bone. The treaty is deep. One has to help the other. One can't harm the other. It's being renewed and renewed and renewed time and time again. And what has it got us? Where has it gotten us? Where has it gotten the Nagas, Morocco? Because if you hear the whole time, if you say you hear the whole time, that means you were here making these treaties. You weren't over there making these treaties. You were right here making these treaties, man. This is why we upset. <laughs> you got to let us be upset if you want to try about with us. You're going to let us go through this. You're going to let us be upset, man. The tribe of Ishmael or Ishmael Lights was a tightly knit African Native American and poor, quote unquote, white descendant, estimated to be around 10,000. 
fugitives from the South. They arrived in the central part of the old Northwest. At the beginning of the 19th century, preceding the other pioneers, after a century of fierce culture conflict with the majority society, the tribe was forcibly dispersed. Culture conflict. An Ishmaelite could be seen at one time as a childish but Laskivish Negro, Laskivious Negro. <laughs> so the Ishmaelite is a knife. Okay. So is Israel. So is Jacob. Or an Indian. So an Indian is a Negro. <laughs> That could be an Ishmaelite. A shiftless and feeble-minded poor white could also be an Israelite. Which is why they make confederacies with them, you know. Yeah. Yeah, man, we're just talking about these maps, man. talking about Ishmael's migration. These Negroes, right? Because Morocco is already here. Just chilling by Tippecanoe. <laughs> chilling under the Great Lakes. Chilling under Chicago. Indianapolis. Hijacking the Wabash River and the White River. And you got to figure out which narrative y'all really want to keep, man. Because if you want to keep a narrative that you already hear, you're going to have to get this work. And if you're going to keep a narrative that you ain't here, then you're going to have to respect the indigenous. But you can't have it both ways, my nuggets. You can't have it both ways. You can't be here not choosing sides during the Chicamago War. <laughs> and you can't be over there with nothing to do with this because that means you got nothing to do with this conversation at all you hijack 101 you know in terms of this this ain't your spot but if you're saying it's your spot then you're gonna have to you know answer to why you let your brothers get rolled up on and why you assisted in the destruction of the tribes of hashura the tribes of the created the indigenous american You're going to have to get this word. You're going to have to choose your destiny, man. If you don't tribe up with the real ones right here in so-called America, and you think you're going to tribe up with yourselves, you already lost. The only hope of any tribes outside of the tribes of Hawa are the tribe of with Hawa, right? With yourself, really. We are putting a magnifying glass over a certain period of time where you didn't tribe up, right? Because we weren't even tribing up. Eighteen ten, right? We got the Coombsays War popping off. Eighteen twelve, <laughs> it's all happening. Tip of canoe. You got Fort Wayne over here. What? I'm not, what about the treaties of Fort Wayne? Right. Treaty, Fort Wayne. Come on, man. Treaty of Fort Wayne, sometimes called the 10 o'clock line treaty. Okay, because they talking longitude and latitude on you. Or the 12 mile line treaty. It's an 1809 treaty that I obtained. Damn. I thought it was 3 million. 
30 million acres, man. 29 million, 719,530 acres. Call it 30 million of Native American land for the settlers of Illinois and Indiana. Damn. That's why you got coming out of this, all these new lands being settled after 1809, right? 1820s, all that. You got all this stuff happening. You got Dansville, right? <laughs> you got Mooresville. The negotiations primarily involved the Delaware tribe, but included other tribes as well. However, the negotiations excluded the Shawnee. This is why Tecumseh is popping off. We're going to get back in, you know, this. Oh, we got another one. This uh, Tecumseh, Push Mataha, Push Mataha conversation. And we're going to get back in the Preston John investigation. Legend and his sources, Keegan Brewer loved the Aqua type battle, but you know, we're picking it right here in the investigation. And we're gonna get back in this one, Indiana University Press, to come saying push my tie, because you know, this was the whole issue. He said, Y'all can't speak for all indigenous people because you want to make a treaty and a confederacy with the hijack. You can't make a treaty that gives up all of our land. This Fort Trent, this Fort Wayne treaty gave up 29 million seven hundred thou thou 30 million acres of land to these new settlers that want to pop off Illinois and Indiana. The negotiations primarily involved the Delaware tribe, but included the other tribes. Right? So the Delaware tribe must have definitely been down with these more situations. And these other tribes, which are involving this push my Taha and the Choctaw Chickasaw whole entire flow. However, the negotiations excluded the Shawnee, which of course, you know, is connected with the Creek, which of course is connected with the Seminole, the Seminole, who were minor inhabitants of the area and had previously been asked to leave by the Miami war chief, Little Turtle. Oh, now we in Turtle Island. Man, it's some more and more war. So what size the Miami on? Territorial Governor William Henry Harrison. We just got that whole situation with Harrison going back all the way up in genealogy to Bush Mata and his sister. The treaty led to a war with the United States begun by Shawnee leader Tecumseh and other dissenting tribesmen in what became known as Tecumseh's War. So that treaty popped it off, and this is why they were having this discussion. It was a last, a last effort to try, but all these tribes, such as the Delaware and these other tribes that wanted to make treaties, and they didn't want to include the Shawnee because they didn't want to include Israel. All this land, man, over a stroke of a pen. Look at all these other treaties. Wow. Wabash. Fort Wayne, St. Mary, 1818. That's right, you know, a few years after the Tecumseh War popped off. Just check out the dates. Treaty on treaty on treaty. This is what it was all about. Yeah. <laughs> now we see. Yeah, Naga's finally seeing clearly.
<laughs> and we're gonna get into push my ties address. You know, I'm just I'm just getting cozy, man. We're just getting comfortable. <laughs> Surfing the way. We coming in hot. Like I said. It's a more and more war, man. Gang is kind as a nugget, right? <laughs> And all these are really knockers. They just, you know, painting them, iconic classing them out. But these are also knockers, man. Black man, Genghis Khan is depicted as a black man. Yeah, Russian painter. Batu Khan's being stabbed. Batu Khan, or excuse me, Batu Khan is stabbing a Russian prince. <laughs> that don't look like this. A Russian prince, because he didn't want to bow down to this throne, make obeisance, obey Genghis Khan's shrine in the pagan ritual. So he wanted to stab him, or he did kill Michael. Sure, Nagolf, a Rus, for not bowing down to the throne of Genghis Khan. Hey, Bam Bam, go ahead and uh, <laughs> show us how to build some stuff, man. Love the aqua top, man. Fall back, my nigga. We're we going to make a dismount, man. We just getting started. <laughs> what you building, Bam Bam, man? What you got over here, bro? It's been a minute, man. Okay, okay. Bam Bam doing some type of brick laying over here, man. Doing it from the mud, getting that clay out, digging up that clay. First, he's going to set the bricks. Then he's going to light that fire. Bam Bam over here eating good, man. He over there, you know, eating berries, man. Fresh out the trees, man. <laughs> hey, fire starters, shout out. Hey, shout out to the fire starters, man. Hezekiah, what it do, man? Hey, big devote, what it do, man? I see you, man. Let's go, man. <laughs> Aqua Charmaine, what it do? She a five star. Abiyah, she a five star. I didn't see Ty Bad Zion start on fires yet, but I'm pretty sure Ty Bad Zion's a five star. <laughs> CJ Battle, what it do, man? We popping up. Big bro, what it do? Clive, Five Eyes, my Dizzle, Fitty, J Law. All my Nagas building Joy World with a Naga. Yosef the real, the real family, all my Nagas contributing. Click, click the links, man. You know, please continue to support as we build, tribe up in real time, and the building continues, and we need you every step of the way. Because we learning. You know, he's teaching us our stuff. This is what we already know. We are remembering. Check out the flow, though, man. He put the sticks and layers it up, man. I mean, it's a nice little furnace. Bam, bam, got popping off, man. Shout out Primitive Technology, man. <laughs> we call you Bam, bam, man. You know that. Laying in bricks, man. Like that fire, man.
Hey, can we do this, my Nagi? Can we do this? Can we get the furnace popping? I see Clive A doing something like this, man. I don't know why. I see Clive A popping up his brick house, man. <laughs> kind of. Okay, you making his own charcoal, Bam Bam? You mean the charcoal balls popping off, Bam Bam? Okay. So we checking in on you, Bam Bam. It's been a minute, man, but anybody surfing the wave off the balcony know we've been rocking with Bam Bam, man, building stuff for a minute, getting us excited for Joy World. Hey, Copper Land, what it do to Copper Land? Naga Hill, what it do, Naga Hill. We represent Naga Bill. Nappy Goat Farm, what it do. All the way up. We uniting the land again. We uniting the consciousness of the cons. Wherever he's at, man, it looked just like our land, uh, you know up the mountain, you know, that's all I'll say, you know, up the mountain, man. <laughs> this is beautiful. Allow, wow, what you got, bad man? Okay. Okay, so you're going to use some of that charcoal ball stuff. And you're, okay, so you're going to make a, some little, uh, Almost like a paste, like a stuckle, you know what I mean? Keep things uh, sticky and in place, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, Bam Bam. You know, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. See what, all right, so then he goes to the ceiling and the, the tiling. Bam Bam just Bam Bam just popping off, man. You know, don't mind Bam Bam. He just, oh man. Hey, this is looking good, Bam Bam. It's looking real good, man. He really thought about it, man. The layers and the symmetry. He really thought about this, Bam Bam. It's pretty good, man. It's really good. It's really good stuff. Got to get that rooftop. Okay. Okay. I see you, Bam Bam. Uh, okay. Uh huh. So you're going to do the double layer. Okay. You're going to layer this joint. You're doing layers, Bam Bam. Hey, it's safe to say. The Bam Bam's popping off. And all we need is, you know, one or two Bam Bams, Malaka, on, on each village. <laughs> and we got uh, stone houses, man. You know, we, we got brick houses, man. <laughs> Shout out Bam Bam, man. We appreciate you, man, you know, for sharing uh, the technology. Shout out Primitive Technologies in real time, man. And we'll pick up here. Matter of fact, you know, this would be a nice little dismount. Just, you know, 
I got so much. <laughs> we got so much to go into back into Tecumse, you know, Dragon Canoe, back to the Preston legend. We're going to pick all that up in 86. Believe it or not, we in 86. We're going to get more into this harmonics flow. Keep looking for this mountain of harmonics. And a nice place to leave off, you know, is digging on this uh, parallel timelines and history just to get your mind bone working around chronology a little bit. And just remember, man, it's a big meteor storm popping off, man. I mean, we got something on that. We might make a double dismount on out the place. Impress the John and Storm in 85. I feel like we're just getting started, man. We're going to talk some more Katie as well, but, you know, so let's dig on it, man. Belly flat. But follow what happens after here. You have Tiberius um, compared to Constantius II, 23 and 24. When we come to Caligula, it's four years and two years. He, uh, Caligula is heir to Julian the Apostate. Uh, then we have Claudius, 13 years, and Valentinian, 11 years, and so forth. He's talking about the, <clears throat> the, the time of rulership, and he's comparing kingdoms from hundreds of years apart, even over a thousand years apart. And you see these rulership dynastic periods really lining up to a point of duplication. And somebody's going to ask at the end, you know, either it's duplicating, like history really is repeating itself, or history is his story that's fragmented and the real history is being duplicated into the past, even into ancient history, man. Let's pick it up from here. Bunch of rulers all reign less than one year on the other side. Okay, very, very conspicuous. Now, the other thing that's interesting is this period sort of in Roman history ends with an invasion by the Goths, where you have Caracalla. Oddly enough, exactly on the other side, you have a second, let's put, put it this way, quote, unquote, second invasion of the Goths. Okay, on the left, we have the Roman, the, the Roman Empire from the first century BC to the third century AD. Then we have the Holy Roman Empire from the 10th century to the 13th century. In other words, on the left here, we have largely the same people um, who are uh, that we had on the, on the right hand side, the previous one, but now they're being compared to rulers of the Holy Roman Empire, okay? Uh, 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 basically, about 1,050 years later. 1,050 years later, remember the three chronological time shifts, 333 years. 1,053 years and 1,778 years. It's 1,800 years, man. Imagine them pushing your story back a 1,000 years. Your people trying to dig on you, they got to go dig in the BCs. Now it opens up this big space for them to write fake history and give you a new testament. And you see, we have another symmetry. And this is how it's reported. But remember, we have to bracket almost everything of this time that's here. Because we don't know what, what the, the veracity of the Chronicles is, what the intention of the Chronicles was, or even what the people really understood by it. I don't think anybody in any position really to make a hypothesis. You get a million ideas occurring to you when you really look into this. So many people that I talk to, they want to get a hypothesis, they want to go off and run with it, you know, to the exclusion of everything else before they end. Oh, we jumping off the roof with this. We're going to have an hypothesis party because <laughs> it appears that all the real drop just happened. And so that you don't know what's the real drop just happening. They made duplicates of it, put it in past. Now you're learning about it in the BCs and you'll never relate your real con kingdom with this whole invasion of Columbus. Columbus can easily parallel with Titus and Vespasian 
that thousand year shift, man, that 1800 year shift. It's the takedown of Israel right here in America, the promised land. And it just happened, man. Understand anything about really what's going on. And I think that people have no business making hypotheses about this until they really understand the extent and the depth. Are we jumping of off the roof. I mean, by getting, I mean, getting like really nailed down. We jumping off the know, roof. Obviously, lots of crazy ideas are going to hurt you, but, you know, they hurt <laughs> me all the time, you know. We talk crazy very well. And I try to follow them out as much as I can, but, I mean, we are not making hypotheses here. This is really not the position to. Remember the little pattern up here? Okay, where we have a little, a little block of history here, and then we shift it back and shift it back and so forth. Fomenko's opinion is the only legitimate history. Now, this doesn't mean that nothing happened before this. The only history that our documents address themselves to um, is from the period of 300 AD of modern times. Everything else is a projection of that material. That is all your ancient history is coming after 300 AD and really is coming after. Due to purposeful confusion, not errors, purpose confusion. They're giving half drop, they're giving half truth. This was done on purpose. This is a frequency war. Remember, there are three shifts. You know, one is 333 years, one is 1,053 years, and the other one is 1,778 years. He has an account on each one of these and how these could have happened historically to produce those shifts. But his is what we might call one radical interpretation. Now, before you say this guy's out of his mind, what Fomenko does, given a pair of duplicates, what Fomenko does is says, well, can we establish astronomically which one is valid? So take, for example, uh, Thucydides Peloponnesian Wars. There are three eclipses mentioned in the Peloponnesian Wars. And they prove they're described with great fullness. There's an, a, a lunar eclipse, an annular solar eclipse, and another, another lunar eclipse. Uh, you can infer what the path of totality was and, and the whole deal from these, from this, these descriptions. The, the creators of modern chronology, namely Scalder and Batavius, trying to uh, astronomically solve the problem of those eclipses we're not able to do it without leaving out some of the data provided by Thucydides, who by the way says he was a personal witness of this so what you make of it he said let's make no presuppositions about this where are the exact astronomical solutions for this triad of eclipses and they turn out it turns out to be one in the 11th century AD and one in the 12th century AD, and no others. No one. So what Fomenko does quite regularly is he will appeal to astronomical arguments to try to determine which is the principal one, and, and his, his conclusion, and however crazy it may sound, is extraordinarily well argued, is that the only legitimate history is the modern history from about 300 on, and most of that, by the way, um, is from 900 on. 900 on. 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, dark age history, got pushed back to the BCs. Your heritage got pushed back 1,000 years, 1,800 years. Now you're looking for King David. You think it's in 700 BC. You're looking at all this Akkadian stuff. How far back did they push and duplicate history to create antiquity, Egypt, all this? Body back for the illusion. Just remember, man, there's a there's a media shower popping, man. Matter of fact, they call it a media, a media storm. <laughs> it's a media storm popping off, man. Uh yeah, man. It's all happening. Love the Woodward, man. It's all happening, man. That could be contaminated with exotic virus-like organisms. Do you see? <laughs> Take a while to spread out and move around. So you end Hold up, up with this massive trail of... Hold up, man. Hold up, man. You need one of these. Hold up, man. We dodge these hijacks. My bad, man. You know, sometimes you got to dodge them. Let's go. That follows the same or impact with Earth's surface, then that is a meteorite. Because we are entering into a dust cloud, 
and you have many particles hitting the atmosphere, this is known as a meteor shower. That is if the dust cloud is spread out very wide and you have a few meteors burning up per hour for sometimes several days. But if you have a denser cloud of dust and you have thousands of these meteors of varying sizes entering the atmosphere in a very short period of time, that is called a meteor storm. Bang. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. How many of you have ever heard of the meteor storm of 1833? Well, it was such a light show, people thought the world was ending. Every year we have several meteor showers and Leonid's meteor shower is one of the biggest. And every 33 years or so, there goes that number again, you have a more intense Leonid shower. The 1833 Leonid meteor storm was the most memorable ever seen in that era. Some called it the night the stars fell. So you get maybe a dozen meteors that streak across the sky in a low level meteor shower within an hour. During the bigger ones, you may see 50 to 100 meteors every hour. Now, when you are seeing thousands of meteors within an hour, that is a meteor storm. Boom or bust, how a meteor storm is possible next Monday night. The Tau Hercules meteor shower could produce an onslaught of 1,000 shooting stars per hour or end up a total dud. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. They said the word we've been waiting for, meteor storm. Myself and others have been saying it's coming. So get used to that word because it's just the beginning. Folks, do you know why I brought that Leonid meteor storm of 1833 up? Well because, and this is not really discussed as much as it should be when it comes to this historical event, I bring that meteor storm up because of the fireballs that came with it. Fireball. And I have no doubt that this one will too. One person wrote about the meteor storm of 1833 and described one of the fireballs as large as the and notice all this 1800 stuff is happening after this american revolutionary war after this the State flow got the the say comet fireballs are popping off it's all happening dragons meteor lego other writings described it as illuminating as the sky was filled with so many meteors that it lit up the buildings below it they all seem to come from a central point in the sky and when you think about what this is going to look like, folks, during a meteor storm, you have the stars that are positioned in the sky, right? And as the meteors start to streak across the sky, when you have thousands streaking across the sky, you can't tell the meteors from the stars. So it looks like all the stars are falling. Now, back then, there were estimations of up to 240,000 meteors per hour. Mm, 200,000 dragons popping up. They're saying this one may be around 1,000, but wow. they don't know how big or dense the cloud is. So that number could be much greater. Or we may see nothing. But I am guessing that we will see something. So we're going to see something. And we gonna see, man. Not spiral, take the wheel, man. We gonna see something, and we gonna see, man. Hey, woo wee! Oh, nice spiral showing us something here, man. <laughs> Pay close attention, cause it's all happening. Y'all hey, make sure y'all get in nice spiral's channel. He's showing dragons in the ether. It's heating up. And it's all happening. 
Keep Surfing the Wave and the Drop Drop Chatter, Ahab, Timmy, Dragon Canoe, Slow Kung, EC, all y'all great drop, man. Everybody dropping that drop. You can get all the press, the links right here. You just continue to support the flow, man. Support Joy World, man. Ahab, to all our contributors, Aqua Tai, Ahab, Tracy Slow Kung. We're raising 20000 now. We saw how far 10000 can get us and how fast we got it. Let's keep raising the 20000 because we got a fence to complete, materials to get, family to take care of as they travel and get on the front lines and build this fence for a naga for you. We got a well to build and dig. We got, we got septic. We got solar. So make it a normal thing to be a constant contributor. Hey, how Ty Battles, Tracy Slocum, Zion Trey, and Zion Marley. Hey, how to the Marley family, Brendan Zavala, Anonymous, all my nuggets, a lot, all my repeat contributors, Miss D, Zion, man, Anonymous, uh, David Abreu, Tracy Slocum, David Narvaez, Stephen Harris, Miriam Hope, Dolores Walls, Kelly Thomas, Ada David, Jerkery Strickland, Broderick Richmond, Clavon, huh? all my nuggets, man, surfing the wave in real time. We really appreciate y'all and everything y'all doing to support us, man, and continue to, you know, do this for the nuggets in Nagaville because we need a wall of protection. Blue, purple, red, white, let it go, thread, Exodus 20, got us in code. Exodus 26 already got us coded up, man. A hop to the 500 code, keep it nagas for your continued Baruch and all praise our creator. Allah, wow, man. We popping off for you for Joy World. Starting with a wall of protection, starting with a boundary. And it feels so good to surf the wave with my nagas, man. Yeah. We just talking meteors, <laughs> meteor storms, man. There may be a rare meteor storm this weekend with thousands of shooting stars. Uh-oh. So now they're talking meteor storms, not meteor showers, my nigga. It's happening at the end of May, the first two decades, the first in two decades. Now researchers report on the possibility of another possible one, and it's happening in just two days. The culprit might be the double asteroid, yada, yada, yada. Y'all just remember, man, shooting stars, stars with the tails, bearded with tangled locks. <laughs> remember that when we talk media in 1828, uh, Webster Dictionary, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's back up, but we don't trust it, but it's back up. <laughs> you put in dragon, you get a meteor. You put in Prester, and then this is the this. This is the Webster Dictionary, man. You put in Preston, you get a meteor. And if Dragon's a meteor, <laughs> and if Preston's a meteor, then we got a whole lot of Prestons popping off in the mesosphere, man. A hop to the tribe, surfing the wave, and continue, man, to share the drop. And, you know, share the wave, man. Let them know what you're reconning. Share the Preston packs, the ether packs. Those are our time capsules. And that's how you support the drop. The reconstruction pack is popping off in the drop shop. Continue to surf the wave, man, and, you know, get the flow from the Nagas dropping them. They, they got the screwed and chopped, chopped and screwed version popping off, man, on the reconstruction pack as well. And it's just all happening, man, for us right here in real time. You know, this is our place, our home. When you go up in the drop shop, when you support us, you support our home, our, our framework, my Naga, you know what I mean? to keep this drop alive, man. And, hey, we're keeping that level fence popping. Love the five eyes, love the club, hey, man. Popping off, man. Get that reconstruction pack, a sappery, no cappery, as well as that mob pack. Keep it popping, man. These are just, uh, you know, the tribe of vibe up. This is the song of the cons, you know what I'm saying? Coming over the beats, man, in 432 hertz. Preston pack two. Is now dropping, man. So you want the last 20 or so Preston full episodes with the updated links and books that go with it. And Tracy Led Aqua made hundreds of PDFs that we're going to put on the Preston Pack, too. So get in there, man, and support MHOE, all the drop popping off in the drop shop, man. Look out for the reconstruction 
chopped and screwed listening to party, man. We're gonna have some fun with that. And we're just gonna keep building for Joy World, man. The most level fence in you, dog. You know, dropping soon. Hey, hop to the con cons. Doing your thing and all the ways you're doing it. We appreciate your support. A lot. Wow. See you in Preston 86. And just, uh, you know, know that the drop don't stop. That whatever happens with YouTube, we got two strikes. That's cool. Whatever happens with YouTube, you can find us right here at home at 432thedrop.com. Download the app for free and continue to surf the way with Drop Nation. Shalom.